When I was 27 years old, I worked in an office in San Francisco. I performed well, and my future looked promising. Being alone in the world made me happy. On Saturday afternoons, my time was free, and I often sailed my little sailboat on San Francisco Bay. One Saturday, however, I sailed too far, and the strong afternoon wind carried my sailboat into the Pacific Ocean. Hopeless that night, a small British brig spotted me and rescued me. The brig was heading to London, and the voyage was long and stormy. I worked as a sailor to pay for my journey. Upon arriving in London, my clothes were old and dirty, and I had only one dollar in my pocket. With that dollar, I managed to eat and find a place to sleep for the first 24 hours. During the next 24 hours, I neither ate nor slept. Around 10 o'clock the following morning, I went to Portland Place. There, I encountered a child with a large pear. Hungry and desperate, I attempted to get the pear, but every attempt was thwarted. Finally, a gentleman opened a window, inviting me inside. The two old gentlemen, brothers, had been arguing about a strange subject. They decided to settle their dispute with a bet. The subject of the bet was related to two million pound banknotes issued by the Bank of England. One note was used for a public transaction, while the other remained in the bank. Brother A believed that if an honest and intelligent stranger arrived in London with only the million pound banknote, he would starve to death. Brother B disagreed, betting twenty thousand pounds that the stranger could survive for thirty days without going to prison. Brother A went to the bank, bought the million pound banknote, and prepared a letter. They waited for the right man and chose me. The letter explained the bet, and I was given the banknote to use for 30 days. If I succeeded, I could have any job with any salary. Leaving the eating place, I hurried to the house of the two gentlemen to correct the mistake they had made. The servant informed me that the brothers were away on a journey to the continent. Despite my attempts to convey the urgency of the situation, the servant couldn't provide information about their return. I left my contact details, expressing the importance of my visit. Confused and holding an envelope from the gentleman, I opened it later in a park. The letter acknowledged my intelligence, honesty, and poverty. Inside the envelope was money, only mine for thirty days. There was no signature, address, or date on the letter. Whenever I passed a tailor, I wanted to buy new clothes, but lacking money, my million-pound banknote was useless. After six attempts, I entered a tailor's shop, inquired about old, unattractive suits, and was led to a back room. The tailor selected an undesirable suit, and when it was time to pay, I asked if they could wait for a few days or change a large banknote. Initially confident, the tailor's attitude changed when he realized the note's value. I bought everything I needed with a million-pound banknote, showcasing it to the public. News of the strange millionaire spread across London, and I lived a luxurious life. I made plans to repay the shop owners once I won the bet and secured an important job. Attending a dinner party at the American Ambassador's house, 
I met Lloyd Hastings, an old acquaintance from San Francisco. He shared his failed attempt to sell shares of the Gould and Curry Gold Mine in London. Hearing his plight, I decided to help him by using my name to guarantee the mine's value. With the plan in motion, shares of the California gold mine gained interest, and wealthy Londoners bought them. Portia and I spent evenings together, discussing our love and future. As the month concluded, Lloyd and I had a million dollars each and it was time to meet the two old gentlemen. In the presence of Portia and the two gentlemen, I presented the million-pound banknote and reported my success. Portia surprised everyone by being the daughter of one of the gentlemen. The gentlemen were pleased, and they offered me any job and salary I desired. In the end, Portia and I married, and the cancelled million-pound banknote became a cherished wedding gift, symbolizing the most valuable thing in the world.